Back in 2015, shortly after the release of Bloodborne, The Guardian published an interview with FromSoft's president Hidetaka Miyazaki. The article ended with the quote, Now I'm president, he says. I get to meet a lot of other company presidents. They're such weird people. I'm fascinated by them. With a smile, he adds, I use some of them as enemy characters in our games. Maybe he's just joking here, but assuming he was telling the truth, it's fun to imagine what this would look like. Are Demon Souls fat officials a representation of what it feels like to work with an uncooperative publisher? It could be. Things get a little spicier if you consider the possibility of these real person stand-ins being the bosses we encounter, rather than just regular enemies. For instance, just imagine how much of an asshole Godric's real-life inspiration would have to have been to warrant the treatment he gets in Elden Ring. What a pathetic excuse for a lord you were. <laughs> Craven to the bone. Pushing me about like that, and after all that grafting, where did that get you? Look down on me, would ya? Godric, you filthy slug. Feel it, feel it, feel my bloody wrath. A reference like this would be pretty personal, though, and the context would likely be lost on us as players. A more fertile ground for investigation would be symbolism referring to another game that this other company president played a role in making. Symbolism like that would involve the sort of references that we as players would actually be privy to. So with that said, let's turn our attention to one of the most peculiar boss fights in the history of Souls games. Do you know for whom this festival is being held? Well, it is none other than General Radan himself. Because the design of the Redond Festival includes some rather unique summoning mechanics. When you take a step back and look how everything is structured, how you are encouraged to use summoning to build a whole team of NPCs, the festival starts looking a lot like an MMO raid. Right down to that asshole who immediately AFKs out as soon as the fight starts. Specifically, the fight seems to be referencing Final Fantasy XIV. You can summon a max of seven NPCs at a time, with Jaren subbing in for patches in Phase 2. This gives us max party size of 8, just like Final Fantasy XIV's standard raid size. Another unique mechanic of the festival is that unlike the other bosses with NPC summons, you can resummon an NPC who has already died. This is basically unlimited in-combat resing, one of the major design divergences of Final Fantasy XIV from the other big MMO on the market. You even get your own pocket healer in Finger Maiden Theralina. When she isn't desperately trying to get people in range of her AoE heals, she throws holy pots for DPS. This is Elden Ring's pure faith build equivalent of a white mage spamming stone during their healing downtime. So mechanically, there's a lot of things in there you could read as a reference. But how about Radon himself? Well, let's start with the name because it happens to be really similar to Final Fantasy XIV's Flame General Rabon. And as it turns out, we can find a lot of symbolic parallels between the two. For instance, their fighting style. Unlike any of the player job classes in Final Fantasy XIV, Rabon has a unique fighting style in dual wielding two heavy, curved blades. And he definitely never changes away from this fighting style for any reason. So his iconic weapons? Pretty similar to Radon's Star Scourge greatswords. Then there's beast symbolism. Raban is known as the Bull of Alamigo. And while Radon's item description emphasizes lion motifs, his posture during his introductory cutscene combined with the horns on his helmet do give an impression closer to a bull, or at least a boar. And looking at the Falling Star Beast, while its relation to Rodan is fuzzy outside of sharing gravitational powers, the beast's moveset is almost certainly coded symbolically as a bull. And that brings us to the last parallel I wish to point out, the Falling Star itself. And then a Falling Star, right before our eyes. I can't fathom how Rodan was holding back something of that scale. He was a living legend, if ever I saw one. The only thing we really know about Radon's motivations is that he's somehow preventing a meteorite from landing in the lands between. Meanwhile, in Final Fantasy XIV, Project Meteor was the narrative device used to explain the reboot between the original release and A Realm Reborn. 
and in the story of this calamity, Raban was a general leading his forces in battle against the armies that were summoning the meteor, so there's some narrative parallels there. Obviously I can't prove that Elden Ring is making a Final Fantasy XIV reference here, but I think there's a pretty compelling case to be made that we're seeing one in Radon. Numerous parallels can be spotted in the gameplay design of the Radon Festival, on a character iconography level when compared to Raban, and on an overall thematic level in the importance of meteors. And of course, we have a direct quote from FromSoft's president, admitting that this is the sort of thing that they do. All it would take is for some other studio to be including the same sort of metafiction elements. Then you would have two characters that could easily serve as a symbolic referent to the same person. Now I don't really care about establishing some particular identity. That portion of this doesn't interest me in the slightest. But the general idea of this method of storytelling is something I find fascinating. For example, if Radon and Melania's beef with each other was over the fate of Eorzea 1.0, I'm just saying the Clean Rot Knights kind of had a point. But anyway, that's it for now. So farewell, Ashen Ones, and may the flames guide thee.